All right, welcome to podcast 4.5. We are talking about stoichiometry today. Now, stoichiometry is when we're going to be converting from masses of substances, so mass of substance A, going through a mole bridge and finding a mass of substance B. Okay, so now we're going to be looking at reactions as a whole and how we can convert from one type of substance to another after a chemical reaction. So we need to talk about chemical conversions first. Remember, moles allow us to do more than just count the atoms that we have present. Uh, we can do chemical conversions when we're looking at balanced chemical reactions. So remember that the reactions show a change in the arrangement of atoms. That's how we know a, we have a chemical reaction because atoms are being rearranged. There are three different definitions we can look at. We have the atomic definition, there's a molecular definition, and finally we have a molar definition. And the atomic shows atom for atom, or uh, atom for atom, and it accounts for every single one, counts atoms. So when we've been balancing, we're looking at how much carbon do we have, how much oxygen do we have, how much nitrogen do we have, looking one at a time if we have everything that we started with. The molecular definition looks at the molecules, ob obviously, but it's a molecule, C-U-L, a molecule ratio. So these are the whole number coefficients. I'm looking at definite sets of, of matter. So your definite sets, definite set of matter. And then finally, we have the molar interpretation, which is an amount of uh, substance, amount of substance that we need to react. So when we're talking about molar balancing, now here's where we can start to get the, the fractions in because I can have half a mole or I can have three quarters of a mole. Atomic, the atomic and the molecular definitions, these have to be whole numbers and that's what we're doing and that's what we're going to stick with for now. But as we start to move into the molar interpretation, we're going to be talking about an amount of substance that I need to have a chemical reaction occur. Okay, so let's take a look at an example. If we're using chemical reactions, we can look at this and we can determine different amounts of substances that are uh, being used or being produced in the reaction. So uh, we need to balance this first. That's the first thing we need to do. And we know it's not balanced because I have four hydrogens in the reactants and only two in the product. So if I put a two here, now I've got two oxygens there, two oxygens here, so I need a two there. So this is a pretty simple one to balance. But it has to be balanced in order for this to work. You cannot forget to do that. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute. So the question says, using the equation below, how many grams? So that's what we're trying to find. So we're trying to find a mass of, of substance of carbon dioxide, so we're looking for CO2, are produced when 15.5 grams of methane is burned in oxygen. So this gives us all the information we need. Okay, so looking at this, I want to know how much carbon dioxide right here is produced when I burn 15 grams of methane. Because we're given a mass, we cannot go straight from mass of methane to mass of carbon dioxide, just like in the butane lab when we lit the candle. We have to go through the moles and use this molar ratio. So when I'm setting up an equation, I have 15.5 grams of methane here, and I need to convert from grams to moles. Okay, so one mole of methane is equal to 16.05 grams, and that gets rid of my gram value. Now, because I can treat chemicals just like a unit label, all I need to do is find the ratio up here in my balanced reaction, and I have my conversion factor. So if I'm trying to cancel out methane, that needs to go on the bottom. Uh, carbon dioxide is what I'm trying to find from up here in the question, so CO2 goes on top, and I look at the ratio of methane to CO2, and I notice that it's one to one because there's nothing in front. So in this particular question, my molar ratio is one to one, which means the amount of methane that goes in is the amount of carbon dioxide that's going to come out. But again, we cannot go mass to mass because the mass of, of methane is not the same as the mass of carbon dioxide. So right now, if I were to stop here, I'm in moles of carbon dioxide, but the question is asking for a mass of CO2, so I need to do one more conversion, where I have one mole on the bottom, and the mass of carbon dioxide is 44.01 grams. Now my moles cancel out, and when I run this equation, so 15 times 1 over 16 times 1 times 44, it gives me 42.05 grams, and this is of carbon dioxide. Now again, notice, even though the ratio is one to one, 
15 and a half went in, but over 42 grams came out. So you must be in a molar conversion because I have to look for every molecule of, of reactant versus product. So there's three different things here. The first thing we need to do is change to moles. Change to moles. The second thing that you do is change your substance. Change substance. And then the third thing you do is change back to grams. So we go back to grams. And that doesn't always ask you to go back to grams, so you need to pay attention to how the question is worded because this one asked for a mass that I need to change back to grams. And remember, this reaction must be balanced. If you do not balance it, you are not going to get right answers. So it must be balanced. Okay. So when we're looking at the steps of conversions, first thing, like I just said, we need to make sure this reaction is balanced. If it's not balanced, your ratios are going to be wrong and your conversions are going to be messed up. Then we need to convert all masses to moles. So if we're starting in moles, there's no conversion to start with. Just convert your substance. If you're given a mass, then you need to convert to moles first. Then thirdly, convert your starting chemical to your ending chemical. So if we're going from a reactant to a product or a product to reactant, it doesn't matter. So convert whichever way we need to go. And then number four, convert back to grams if necessary. It might not always be worded like that, so pay attention to your question. Okay, another example. Using the equation below, how many grams, so again, I'm looking for a mass because of grams, of mercury 2 chloride, that is this, is formed when 6.5 grams of mercury 2 nitrate is reacted. So I'm looking here with sodium chloride. So we need to balance this reaction first. And just giving it a quick look, uh, I need a 2 here and a 2 there. So again, another pretty simple balance. Uh, 6.5 grams is what we're starting with. And this is of mercury to nitrate. And I can convert this into moles. Okay, so one mole of mercury to nitrate is 324.59 grams. After I change my grams into moles, I can convert between substances. So I'm looking at the relationship of mercury nitrate to sodium nitrate, or I'm sorry, not sodium nitrate, uh, mercury chloride. And again, this is a one-to-one -one ratio, so another very straightforward example. So 1HG032. So if we're following along, grams are gone, mercury nitrate is gone, and now I need to convert back to grams, so one mole on the bottom to cancel these guys out, and 271.49 grams. Now notice this mass here is of this compound, my ending compound. This mass here is of my starting compound. So make sure you've got the right masses in the right places. Your final mass here should correspond to the one that you are changing to. So after you run this calculation, we end up with 5.44 grams of mercury chloride. Okay, And again, even though I have a lower mass here than what I started with, I didn't lose any material, I just changed to a different substance. This compound is lower mass than this one, so even though I have the right amount, my mass is going to be different, and that's why we don't use mass to do conversions. So again, more practice. Please read chapter 3, section 6, and then do questions 49 to 56. This is going to be the very basic skill that we're going to be using the rest of the year. If you can't balance on your own, you need to work on that. If you cannot set up the conversions on your own, you need to work on that. And then you might, I think you need to pick up these worksheets. Uh, these might be the two of the ones that got left out of your packet, so you can come grab this from me in class. But um, please take time to do this. There is a quiz based on this, so you're going to have to do it for me in class. So if you have questions, please ask me there, and I will see you then.